Hello interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. I've got the Infrared P2 Pro here, uh, which is an infrared camera for a mobile phone. Uh, when I'm doing uh, board repair and I do voltage injection, you guys have often seen me use my um, FLIR 1 thermal camera. And um, I have said in many, in several videos, and I've said to anyone who asks in the comments as well, uh, when they've said sort of, oh, you know, what thermal camera do you use? I've said, well, I use this FLIR 1, but it's not very good. I don't recommend it um, because it's quite an old model I've got and blah, blah, blah. It's just not very good. It's not designed for what we use it for. Um, so Infrared reached out and said, hey, we've got our new P2 Pro camera. Would you like to take a look at one? And I said, yes, please. Uh, so here it is. Right, allow P2 to record only when using the app, thank you. Um, and yes, I will allow you access to my recordings. Yes, I will allow you to access the camera. Um, there we go. Oh, there we go. I took off the macro lens, now that makes a lot more sense. Obviously the macro lens is for point blank range. So um, there's my hand. Uh, let's see, let's go to a more familiar palette. Let's go to the iron red. There we go. That's the kind of view that people are more accustomed to seeing. Wow, that update speed is great. I think this thing is 24 FPS. Um, and again, my my FLIR 1 is hilariously bad. Like, I'm not going to bother to like um, try and do some kind of drag race between this and my FLIR 1. Um, because my FLIR 1 is... It's not a modern... Um, it's not a modern thermal cam. So it kind of goes without saying that this is going to demolish my FLIR 1. Um, so yeah, there are various other... Um, palettes you can use there. So the reason why these other palettes might be useful is, um, uh, you know, either personal preference or color blindness, things like that. You could set it to a palette that works for you. So that's neat. So we've got photo mode and video mode. Do we get a narrower field of view in video mode? Nope. That's pretty good. Uh, all right. So let's have a look at the settings. So we can go into professional mode. What happens if we do that? Nice. So with um, in professional mode, if I hit point and go there. Cool. So now I can actually put a point on the screen and it will track the temperature of that exact point. Um, this is use this is great. Like this is all stuff that is really common on thermal cameras, and my FLIR one can't do this. Um, so literally just having a pointer appear would be is great. Cool. Right, let's stick on the... Eh, let's put on the macro lens. So how far do we need to get before that is good? Wow. We can get really close with that. You can actually make out... You can make out the lines on my knuckles there. Can that, like, make out my fingerprint? It's my little finger, so it's not going to be any use to you. Not quite. However, that's very good. All right. Um, let's just stick a circuit board under there super quick. Yo! Yo, look at that! That's nuts! That's crazy detail. This is a different world to using my heckin' FLIR. All right. Uh, cool. So yeah, that the and how good is it without the macro lens? So without the macro lens, yeah, without the macro lens, we've got the same kind of detail that we would normally expect from one of these things, which is a blob around there somewhere. Fair enough. Very cool. Right. I'm going to go and rig up a board. Um, and we'll actually demonstrate this in action, detecting a short circuit. So, see you after the cut. Alright, so I've got a practice board here that I have rigged up with a dead capacitor that's in a classic place on the main power rail of the motherboard. So what I've got, what I've done is, um, somewhere on the board, I know where it is, but it'll be easy to spot when we check into it. Dead capacitor, and I've already wired up um, two injection cables here. So. Uh, these two wires are plumbed onto the ground connection and onto the start of the main power rail after the MOSFET. Um, so what I'll do now is 
Um, I'll change the overhead camera here to both of my um, thermal cameras in turn. I said I wasn't going to compare it against my FLIR 1. However, I've changed my mind. I am going to show a comparison because what I want to do is... It, it goes without saying that the Infinirate is going to demolish this because the Infinirate is a significantly newer model. This is a very old version of the FLIR 1. So it, it, this is not a contest. But what I want to demonstrate is that the newer thermal cameras are vastly superior to the old ones. So buying an old second-hand one might not be the best way forward. In an ideal world, I would have like a brand new FLIR 1 to compare against or something like that. But that's not something I have any intention of buying. So there it is. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to stick this into this camera mount. And uh, we'll plumb some power into this and see what lights up. All right, so I've got my FLIR 1 connected up. And the first thing you'll notice is that we have a lot of background noise here. And when I'm normally using this particular camera, what I have to do is keep one hand in shot at all times to balance the picture. Otherwise, it just tries to normalize with the background temperature. So you can calibrate on this. Like I can tap the calibrate button up in the corner here and it will calibrate. However, as soon as I take my hand off, it just normalizes again. There's no way to lock the calibration to keep things as they are, which is very, very annoying. But that is what it is. So what I'm going to do now, let's turn on the power supply and see what happens. So I'm pumping two amps into this board now. And let's just put one hand in to normalize. So 2 amps is not a huge amount. This is a low amount of current just to see if it will spot it. And like this is not a diagnosis, so we'll just cheat here. And I'll tell you now that what we're looking for is a, a, a capacitor in this selection here. So um, you can see there's a little bit of heat there straight away. Fair enough. Uh, let's bump that up to 3 amps and see how much more that lights up. And as we put 3 amps into it, you know, that's starting to glow. Like, again, if I were fixing this board for real, it would be very apparent that that's where our issue is, around that kind of area. So the next thing I would do now is bring this in closer to the camera to try and get more detail. So let's move up. And as we get closer, you can see we've got a big flare up there. And now this brings in the first, you know, quote unquote problem with this one. Right, so you can see that we've got this dark spot here that is a screw hole and it doesn't properly line up. And over here as well, you can see the screw holes don't properly line up. And that's because the FLIR 1 is using a blend of a visible spectrum camera and the infrared camera because the actual IR cam is kind of too re low resolution to give a good picture. And the issue is, is those two lenses don't line up very well. At long distance, it's fine, but at very close range like this, it's not fine, quite frankly. And it means that right now we can tell that there is a fault somewhere around this area, but we're not really getting a lot of help as to exactly which component it is. So at this point now, I'd need to use alcohol to narrow down to exactly which capacitor it is. So I've turned off the power supply. I'm going to let the board cool down while I swap out the cameras. See you in a mo. Right, so here's the infrared. And straight away you can see the difference in frame rate just immediately. You know, there's still a little stutter now and then when it does a calibration. That's kind of just normal. But at any rate, just like we don't even have a visible light camera on this particular one. But there's still a very clear thing. Now, the only disadvantage is, is that you will notice that without the without the hybrid image, there is less detail on the board. But let's see if that is actually a real problem or not when we actually come to look at it. Certainly, like, looking at my hands, you wouldn't even need the visible light blend. But, hmm, I just having just done a stark contrast, I'm like, oh, okay, the, the hybrid picture is actually kind of useful, but whatever. Anyway. So I've just got this in the just basic mode and it's putting up little pointers across the screen just showing where the hot spots and cold spots are at the moment. So uh, let's turn on the power supply. 
Oh, look at that. Um, all right, I've 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 still got it on 3 amps. Let's just... Uh, hang on a second. I'm going to turn that down. Turn that off. I'm going to put it on 2 amps again, just to see if it can pick up the 2 amp flare. Okay, so even at 2 amps, just immediately there is an orange dot. And yeah, you can see that flaring. If I put my hands into view, it's not so distinct. But if I move my hands away, we get a very distinctive orange dot appear there. And that is just, that is a very clear indicator straight away. And this is at 2 amps. If we step up to 3 amps, there's 3 amps, and we now have a very clear dot. And discounting, there we go, that temperature has actually now reached higher than the reflection we've got down here, which means the automatic hotspot dot is now actually zeroed in on that dot and identified it as the heat source in this picture. So let's come in for a slight close-up now. And when we come in for the close-up, you can see we've got a little bit more detail. But at this range, without the visible light spectrum, we can't quite see what's going on there. We just know roughly where it is. So, okay, that's not bad. We can probably squint really hard and figure out exactly what component that is. But this is where that macro lens is going to come into play. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to free hold the camera. And I'm going to put the macro lens on it. So now we're on the macro lens. Now I can just zoom in on this. So here we go. And at this range, when I actually close in on the board, we can very clearly see that bank of capacitors. And we can very clearly identify that it is the middle one that is actually on fire. And that is exactly the failed capacitor that I put on the board. And if I back out again, you know, there's a blurry mess because we're on the macro lens, but I can just come right in on the heat signature all the way in and see exactly what it is. So without the hybrid view, we do get less detail of the board. We don't have that nice highlighted outlines like we get with the FLIR. But the resolution of the camera is so much higher that it doesn't actually matter and we've clearly identified what it was. Remember that with the FLIR, although we knew the general area and we could see components on the board, we had no information whatsoever on which component it actually was that had failed. Whereas this one, even with less detail in the visible light domain, we've actually narrowed down exactly what component has failed straight away. That's very impressive. So I'm really impressed by the Infrared P2 Pro. Um, it at nearly double the resolution of my previous thermal camera. Uh, and with the built-in macro lens, it gives me so much more detail about what's actually going on when I'm doing fault finding on motherboards. Um, it doesn't even need the visible light spectrum, which, as you saw on my FLIR, is a handy feature to have, but is somewhat made necessary by the low resolution of the actual thermal imaging. If you have double the resolution, suddenly you find you don't need that th that visible light overlay anymore, which, while handy, does also clutter the view significantly over what you're actually looking at. So um, I think it's a great product. It's vastly more convenient to use because it's smaller and powered directly off of your phone instead of having its own internal battery. Uh, and the software offers vastly more functionality than the old FLIR ones as well. So if you have one of these older thermal cameras, either an old FLIR one like mine or an old thermal camera built into a phone or something like that, now might be a really good time to upgrade. Or failing that, if you're getting into repair and you don't have a thermal camera yet, I cannot recommend one enough. I was very resistant to switching over to a thermal camera, but as soon as I started using one, it literally changed my world. I could not believe the difference it made. 
even if you're not using this thing for, for electronics and you are either a plumber or an electrician and you want to use it for tradesman purposes, you can also find it without the macro lens for a little bit cheaper. And as you can see from some of this stock footage that I took, it's also just really good for looking at stuff. Um, it's, it's very funny to just point thermal cameras at all kinds of stuff around the shop and just see the heat. And my old one could do this as well, but nowhere near this kind of detail and nowhere near this kind of accuracy with actual thermal measurements on screen as well. Um, but despite this, I think Infrared have a very clear vision on who their target market is. Um, while, I was, uh, while I was editing this video, I actually had an email from them um, basically saying words to the effect of no unboxing that's boring just show it showing a short circuit on a circuit board that's what we want to see I'm like okay you guys you got it so I actually uh, I actually cut down a lot of content out of this video uh, in terms of pricing um, the P2 Pro is fairly competitively priced um, it clocks in at some of the cheapest in class and it's currently on sale on Amazon UK for about £226, not including delivery. Um, however, that's still very good. Uh, you can get it for about the same price on AliExpress and it's available all over the world as well. I'll have links to all of the Amazon uh, regional stores down in the description below. And if you use my coupon code ADAMANT123, which I'll also include down below, you get an additional $20 off and it helps me out a little bit as well. So, hope you guys found that interesting, and uh, as I say, if you want to learn more, check out the links below to find out more about the P2 Pro. Thank you once again to Infire for sending me the new thermal camera. It is absolutely going to be my new daily driver, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.